Good morning everybody, welcome back to another film. So those of you that watched my last video on Orkney, you will have seen that um, I had a major issue in that the camera took a dive onto the, onto the tarmac and uh, smashed beyond repair, so it seemed. And I did think that was going to be the end of my time, my video in time in Scotland, but as luck would have it on the way home, um, we're stopping in stages on the way back. I managed to pick myself up a nice deal at Curry's in Inverness and uh, I've now upgraded to the Canon M50 Mark II. It was a deal that was too good to refuse. It came with an extra lens at a, at a really reduced bargain price. And I know a lot of you will be saying you should have got that, you should have got this, you should have got the other. It really does suit my needs and the price was just too good to miss. So this is what I'm shooting with from now on and I'm sure there'll be a, an improvement in, in the quality of the images. This camera's got a proper lens on it rather than just one that zooms in and out that's attached um, to the body. So enough about kit. My plan going home, um, we've got another two or three days is to stop at a couple of woodlands, this being one of them, to check out potential for future. Um, location wise, to be fair, Scotland's filled with, with woodlands such as this and this location is just not, not that far south of Inverness. Um, but anywhere between Inverness and Fort William and even beyond and the eastern section going down through Aviemore is full of woodlands like this. This particular one is predominantly birch woodland as many of you will have already seen, a mixture of silver birch and downy birch. And <laughs> you'd think you can't go wrong, to be fair, and to a large extent you probably can't. You know, wherever you point the camera, there's composition opportunities, but we're really looking for those nice little sweet compositions that, that, that raise the bar above the regular because this woodland is so spectacular, any image will look fantastic. And these are great training grounds for woodland photography. So I'm going to stop waffling now and um, have a little walk around, have a little scout around. I did go out last night and um, managed to find one composition just, just over to my right there, which if I don't find anything else this morning, um, we'll finish off on that one and I'll talk you through why I like it. So I found my first composition. I really quite like it. I don't think it's as good as the one that I found last night that I finished on, but it's a great one to start this video with. So just there, <laughs> not used to this new video, this new camera. Um, that tree there and that tree there form the basic parts, components of the composition. But I also like this little line running through between them. <laughs> not easy to show you. But um, those two trees are really beautiful and I think they will frame up really nicely. Uh, I will definitely exclude the sky and just focus in on that nice close composition, a nice tight crop as a starter. So get the camera out. So this is the scene lined up. I've decided to, to show you through the video camera. It's just a little bit awkward to show you through the back of the stills camera. I just can't get this, this video camera quite high enough in this instance. But what a beautiful scene this is, absolutely gorgeous. Um, two main components, so of course you've got the tree on the left here, more of a, a dominant character, and the lesser one here on the right. But the main part of this for me is this line that runs through the middle and into the distance that takes your eye through the scene. And of course you've got all the bilberry and the heather in different tones and shades all along the bottom here and leading throughout lots of different tones and textures with this a really beautiful scene that just makes your eye just want to wander between the two trees and into the distance so I'll put that image on now
So it's often the case that you originally see a much broader scene and then you work down to a more condensed version of it and that's what I did for that last shot. I'm going to now show you the broader scene that I originally um, was drawn to. I'm going to take that image now and then you can decide which you think is the best out of the two. I, I, look, I like them equally, I have to say. Um, I can't really choose between them, but some of you may feel differently. So I'll just show you that composition now, what I've got lined up. So, so the main character is still here, but now more central. I've still got the one on the right, although it's cropped off ever so slightly. And I've now introduced this little tree over to the, to the left hand side on the distance. Still got this line running through the frame to take your eye through, but instead of now taking your eye through the centre of the frame, it now takes you from the left hand side through to the right hand third. So a very, very similar, similar story. Um, but like I say, hard to choose between the two. So I'll put that on now. The settings are exactly the same. So I rather like this as a composition. It's not without its technical problems and flaws, but um, very few images don't have those. So the key things obviously are the two birches on either side of me growing up, nice characters reaching out to one another to, to touch in the middle. Got a nice birch on the left that's just growing in, nice little, little um, arc to it there. One thing I don't like, I'm not overly keen on, is there's a birch in the background there that's quite straight, it's quite stark, and I'm not sure that really adds anything to the image. Of course, you can see the sky on the frame that I've got there. That will be cropped out entirely when I get my stills camera up. I'll get it nice and high so that I can avoid that. A lot of the images this morning, whilst potentially they were beautiful, problems with sky, creeping into the frame and into the composition has been a real difficulty and in, in a lot of the frames that I've, I've, I've lined up I just couldn't get away with it and the ones where the sky wasn't a problem there's a lock down to the right hand side and the grey sky is reflecting um, the grey sky and you can see that coming through the lower, um, the lower trunks so I've been trying to keep that out as well so the compositions that are workable are few and far between but I'll get this one now I quite like this and then we'll move on to my third one which is the one I did last night. So ready to go as you can see the tripod is extremely high it's been important for me to get it as high as possible to exclude that sky again and even now in order to get the the left and right that I want in the frame because this medium format camera is quite square by comparison to the video camera I'm having to include a lot more of the top and bottom that I would prefer and uh, what I'm actually getting is a little bit of the sky creeping in to the top right hand side of the frame so it's not ideal and I will have to crop that out in post and also you can see if you look down to the right hand side of the frame you can see the lock and that's been the other problems that I've just mentioned that's been this morning you can see the highlights coming through those those lower trunks so Whilst there's lots and lots of lovely trees in this, this particular woodland, it, you, you've, really got to, you've really got to be careful not to introduce things that, that sort of reduce the quality of the image. Um, this for me, on my scoring system, is probably about a three and a half, um, or potentially four. Some of you argue with my, my scoring system and, and think they're a lot higher or even a lot lower than what I've said. So I'll leave it up to you. But I do like these, these two prominent figures they're, they're nice and bold and they stand out really well against the, the autumn colours in the background. Um, as I've said, you can see the tree on the right hand side, which is a bit of a distraction, and the nice one further back on the left. My main issue with this, when I look at it through the camera, is that I always think the eye should be taken on a visual journey through the scene to give it that three-dimensional view. And in this instance, once you've got past the two main characters and the, the two in the middle distance, 
there's nothing else for you to look beyond to and what we've got is some younger birch regrowth down there that you could argue is, is, is forming a stopper and your eye cannot go any further so you, you can only linger on these these foreground interesting characters for so long before you then want to naturally look further into the scene so settings wise I've got this at f11 because there's not a lot of depth of field required a quarter of a second exposure at 100 ISO again no polarizer just a straight shot and um, the focal length is 50 mil so around about 30 mil on a full frame camera I do like the foreground bilberries the way that the different colors and shades just just sort of blend with one and one another really beautifully it's a great time to come this it's not full on autumn so you've still got some of those greens but some of the leaves are turning it, it makes for a really nice contrast rather than a, um, a constant color which i really like so just grab another one that's looking really quite nice the exposure is absolutely perfect so i'll put that on now So behind me is the um, the scene that I, I shot last night. It was quite late on. It looks a little bit different than it, it does now, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how the two images process together. Um, talk you through the composition quickly. So the birch on the left-hand side that's got all the oak moss lichen on it, that's the left-hand side of the frame. That's where I will crop to. And then in the background, by contrast, you've got a birch that's in its full autumn finery and those two are the main components within the frame at the bottom of the frame in the middle distance you'll see that there is a birch tree that's fallen over um, that provides an added feature within the center of the frame and then there is a bit of a, a, a little bit of a valley running down between the two that helps to take your eye um, through the whole image um, I'll make sure as, as much as possible that I, I crop and, and the settings are exactly the same as last night, give or take the, the lighting difference. It was quite a bit darker than this last night when I shot it, but um, I'll get that lined up and um, I'll talk you through the tighter composition just now. So, nice, I've got managed to get the camera framed up at the back of the stills camera so you can see the composition better. As discussed, you can see the fallen birch in the centre there, um, the the birch on the left with all the lichens on and then of course the one on the right um, just here with the nice autumn colours on you just see the nice trunk catching the light there I've not gone off to the right of that because there's nothing really to add other than more autumn colours and that birch stump just adds a nice anchor point for that right hand side and I do like this little v-shaped tree here on the left and uh, the bit I really like is that the the layers of bilberry on the bottom which are really nice and help to lead your eye through and you can just about see that line diagonally running through the center of the frame there so the problem i've got at the moment is the sunlight is catching the tops of the trees and i really don't want that um, it's too much contrast so i'm going to wait until the sun goes in it will do there seems to be plenty of cloud around and then i'll grab the shot what i will say is by comparison the shot that i took last night was about half an hour after sunset so it's a lot more blue and cooler so i'll put both images on now and uh, leave some comments below let me know what you think of those two
Well, that was a really enjoyable couple of hours this morning. The midges are starting to bite now. It's getting warm and I didn't think we'd get midges this time of year, but they're certainly getting going today. I'm going to move on now. It's time for me to head further south. Um, I will catch you in the next woodland. I don't know where it's going to be. I'm just going to find something en route. Um, it could be more birch like this. It could be beech. It could be oak. It could be any type of woodland. But uh, it's definitely going to be woodland because I think it will be a nice addition to this little segment. So I'll see you in, in just a minute. Mm -hmm.